rugby league community, clubs and the RFL are right to continue to campaign until that becomes the case. I hope that other sports can learn from the excellent work that rugby league has done on this issue. Hey, hey. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I include this as the, as the end finally because it came out at the same time as a wider review of um, the treatment of homosexuals and transgender people and that sort of, in sport mm-hmm. came out um, which was damning of the way the attitudes yeah. tend to lie within yeah. sport so it's a yeah. real positive story for rugby league of course that we're getting compliments for mm-hmm. for our approach as a sport now yeah. there's always going to still be work to do in this area yeah. because like you like you sort of corrected the statement in a way about the racism issue as well yeah. there's always work to do we're never gonna well we maybe one day we'll finally be there but nothing's been dealt with it's be it's being, being dealt, dealt with. with yeah um we're dealing with it rather than having dealt with it yeah but things like the firm action taken on the abuse that uh, keegan hurst sort of the fact that we have an openly gay athlete in our top division the fact that we had previous to Keegan Hurst another openly gay yeah. athlete in our competition in, in Gareth Thomas mm-hmm. and you've got like the canal siders and, and things like that which yeah. are positives that you, you don't I, I don't hear stories like that too much too widespread um, mm-hmm. so it's great we have them in our sport yeah yeah, it's phenomenal. It's, it, it is one of the things that I love about Rugby League as well, that open, inclusive attitude that we should all just bloody have anyway. Do you know what I mean? But it does make me proud yeah. to be such a fan of such a wonderful sport um, for that reason as well. Okay, that's the news from around the world of Rugby League then. Let's take a look back, Mark, at round one of Super League. Right, well, without further ado, let's get stuck into the first round of competition in the 2017 Super League. Before we fly into everything as we normally do, we have changed the structure up a little bit. Much like the new rule changes have come in for the players, we've got some new structures to get used to as well. Um, Previously, what we've done is talk about... Exactly. We're going to give it a run out. It's um, it's on a trial. We're going to... Talk about the game very briefly as I introduce things as normal. Then we're going to go straight into fan feedback because we make a big deal about it being your podcast. So we're going to put you, the fans, at the forefront of what we do when it comes to game reviews. Then there'll be some some stats and some player analysis and a bit of chat from us at the end of that. So things have been jiggled around slightly. Of course, we'd love your feedback on it. Um, but we're going to give it a go to see how uh, see how it sits in the flow of the show. So let's start then on Thursday night down at Langtree Park. St Helens took on Leeds in a well-attended but low-scoring affair, 6-4 in favour of St Helens. It was a low-scoring but enthralling start to the Super League campaign. Joel Moon scored the first try of the new season in the corner for the Rhinos, who led 4-0 at the break, before Theo Farge crashed over early in the second half, uh, with Mark Percival's conversion making it 6-4 to St. Helens, who also had two tries ruled out by the video referee. Uh, Leeds then pretty much spent the second half pressing Saints for a victory, uh, but Saints' defence stood firm. So first blood in the new season fell to St. Helens. And we had some feedback. Mark, who kicked us off? Oh, is that how we're, we're doing the alternate? I thought I thought I'd bring you in. <laughs> do you want me to do it? I'll do it all. No, no. Um, we'll do the alternate like we like we discussed, but didn't agree on. <laughs> well, no, I'll carry on. That's Aiden, all right. The first uh, first one to We've go. We've got our first knock on of the season. Then haven't we? is St Helens fan um, Aidan Stalker. He said enjoyed that. I'm sure people will complain, but it takes a few weeks for everyone to get going. Farge was very good. Richardson grew into it nicely. Amor and Wormsley as reliable as ever. Stevie Ward was a monster for Leeds. It's good to be back. There you go. Paul Hoody said, no flair, no direction, about sums it up, and that's both sides. Bright point for Leeds was Golding, and Farge was superb for Saints. Besides that, it was very, very dull. Just to touch on Golding, mm. the thing that impressed me most with him was his, his defence. Yeah. That, mm. that was... Better than I was expecting it to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I expect it, you always expect him to be an elusive runner, but in the games I've seen him in, 
he's been questionable in defence in terms of dealing with high balls and being under pressure and actually he was strong for them his size and stature and experience of means course. that you're going to have questions about his his positioning and his ability to deliver in one on one situations and that sort of thing but he delivered yeah um, you know, Sky talked enough about Farge's defence. We'll mention that later. Mm. Brian Davies, he said, really enjoyed it. Always tight, tough games in Feb. Farge looks good. Ash did Ash Golding. Even Callum Watch- Watkins did something good. Yeah. Though <laughs> lots of average stuff too. Hope the refs keep penalising players for stepping off the mark. Not one or two yards forward, but sideways to try and take the markers out of the equation. Colin Render said, disappointed to lose, but plenty there to be positive about. Golding looked good, Parcel is quality, and Burrow still going strong after 500 games. Need to work on attacking options and last tackle plays. I'd accept. I'd, 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 I'd say that last point means Burrow is still going rather than going strong. Yeah. Um, Owen said, seemed everyone is uh, slate in this game, but I enjoyed it. Maybe I've just missed rugby too much. Not great performance from either t- team. Remains to be seen, but I predict they, it may be a mid-table performance for both. Saints deserve winners, and good to see Theo showing his usual form being recognised. The Wakey White got in touch and said, I was a bit underwhelmed considering how long I've been waiting for Super League to return. First half, I thought Saints looked more dangerous with the ball, but kept dropping it to let Leeds off the hook. In the second half, Saints took control when Wormsley and Roby were on and ran out deserved winners. Both sides decent in defence and some great one-on-one tackles going on, but Leeds looked rudderless with that half-back combo. Hashtag long season ahead. Mark W said, not the best first half of a lot of mistakes, but the second was much more entertaining. Farge, Golding, Makinson impressed a lot, but Saints need to sort their discipline. Chris Macy got in touch to say, I've got to say that even though it wasn't a high-scoring game, I really enjoyed the tussle and the defensive displays, especially that out-of-nowhere try-saver from Makinson. Great stuff, and either team winning would have been deserved. Also, a night for the young ones. Take about Farge, Richardson and Golding, who stood out for me personally. A good start to the season. Golding, uh, sorry, we talked about Golding. Richardson had that sort of chip over the top yeah. that was uh, well, the force of dropout. That was his sort of key part of the game. But I actually think he played really well, really maturely. Yeah. Um, obviously, they let Wilkin take control of a lot of the stuff. When Roby came on, he led the team mm-hmm. as well. But but that takes pressure off the young man and lets him feel his way into it a little bit more than he might ordinarily have done in that pivot position anyway, doesn't it? So and I think well both of the sense. young halves played that well. Mm. They they allowed that to happen, yeah. knowing their own limitations, let's say. And of course it makes it tougher for Leeds if there's... Because Wilkin does a lot of the marshalling them around. Essentially, you've got three or four halfbacks on the field with Roby's runs yeah. supplementing that. So it spreads the workload and makes it harder for Leeds to just focus on the two young halfbacks even though that's obviously what the game plan was at, at the start for them, was to yeah. hammer the two halves. And Makinson's name starting to creep in a few times now. Mm. Uh, Mitchell Darts, he says, it's deja vu all over again. Plenty of ball and chances to win it, but don't have that killer punch. Saints defended great, but we didn't give them a lot of creativity to be worried about. Golding was our best, under pressure the whole night, but caught and supported well. Theo Farge was brilliant for Saints. Paul Michael Craig got in touch and said, For a first round game, this wasn't a bad match, even with Saints dropping the ball a lot in the first half, and the ref blowing the pee out of the whistle. For Leeds, Watkins looked dangerous, and young Golding shows signs of potential. Also, did anyone think he looked a bit like Jonathan Thurston? Maybe it was just the North Queensland cowboy style jersey Leeds were wearing. Farge was deserved as man of the match, even though I'm not sure he actually scored. So he doesn't think he grounded the ball. Oh. I didn't think it was up for debate particularly. No. I was pretty happy with that as a, as a no. grounding, really. I had to think, I look back at it and I think I have to disagree with the thunder here. I think he did get it down. I, I can't recall ever questioning it. No. No. In fact, I'm almost. No, they did, they did go to the referee for it, didn't they? But it wasn't did for they? the. Did they go to the, the screen for that one? They went to the screen a few times. For I'm watch, well, the thing is, I'm watching it back in my mind's eye now, and I can see Faj rolling over and getting the ball kind of down like that, doesn't he? So maybe I'm just imagining the replay. Yeah. I didn't think it was a bigger, as big a question as, 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 as Paul seems to be thinking it is. No, no. Fair play. That's the first time I've sat and questioned it, to be, to be honest. I know. Um, Frogmore, another St. Helens fan, he said, writing a delayed review is never easy as it's not fresh in my mind. I have to rely on dot points. So, the first dot point, uh, bullet points we call them in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. 
Uh, is, uh, Which is your queen too, mate. Learn to speak her English, yeah? Poor discipline with and without the ball. Tremendous defence to hold out the opposition to clean up the mess of errors, especially the makings and chase down. Great to have him back. Mm. A good debut by Richardson. Theo is the MVP. That was longer than I expected. Oops. P.S. We're undefeated. Give us a trophy now. <laughs> yeah, I bet you'd say that. Alan Walker got in touch. He's okay, everyone. Um, he said, defence on top, especially with no respect for the 10. Uh, obviously, Farge and Golding stood out, but all the other good players were in red Vs, like Makinson, Percival and Roby. Lees' attack really lacked penetration and guile. Whatever the negatives, it's good it's back. Tyler Cass fans a bit of an arm wrestle and a game of attrition for both teams. Leeds looking better than last season and were tough to beat. That try-saving tackle from Makinson, though, was the match winner. I agree. I absolutely agree. I think Leeds would have gone to win that had that try gone over. Mm -hmm. John Hamilton, uh, sorry, Elliot Wrench says, uh, put very simply, a good start to Super League 2017. Very entertaining and I thought Leeds looked a better bet than last year. Neither team shone for me, but Super League is back and I enjoy that. Uh, Leeds fan John Hamilton got in touch. He basically summed up how games can go against Saints here. He said, yes, there were positives and some great individual performances, but you can't spend that amount of time in the opponent's third being handed scrums and penalties and only come away with one unconverted try. That's what Saints do to you, John. Mm. Um, some great defence, but toothless in attack. Still great to have Rugby League back. Hadn't realised how much I've missed it. Richard Wilkinson gets in touch from Down Under. He says, now then, lads, perhaps not a bad start for the Rhinos. Solid D, and the difference from the win was a sublime tackle. Or, perhaps a, f- a poor first half from Saints should have seen us score more. But our attack looked benign once again. The amount of goal line try savers we came up with is a good sign but says the best team won. Hashtag kick to death. Round two, and it's a must-win game. Lose to Lee, and the pressure will be catastrophic. Round 11 against Lee. Well, it is round 11. <laughs> Technically. Technically, it's round 11, isn't it? I'm a stickler for the technicality. You're a pedant of the highest order. But in more serious um, chat on, on Rich's point, mm. the goal line try savers that they came up with, him saying that's a good sign, it is a good sign. The way I read the game was Leeds had the better opportunities to make chances but couldn't whereas Saints had the worst opportunities to create chances but actually when they got in mm. position they made more chances ch- the chances they made were closer to being tries yeah whereas Leeds just couldn't get close to being tries despite how much opportunity they had to, to do that, which a lot of the Leeds people touched on about the benign attack and that sort of stuff. And I'm sure you and I are going to talk about Saints' defence at the end of the uh, of the feedback, aren't we? Uh, yeah, Mark Stevo, uh, at Mark Stevo 72 he said, much improved defensively, but very one-dimensional in attack. Again, a Leeds fan... Um, Pointing that out, not taking the kickable penalties cost us in the end. Still not convinced this coach can handle the transition. The penalty that sticks out to me is the one just before half time. Yeah, where he wanted them to keep rolling. Yeah, yeah. When, no, when it well, when it took about a minute for anyone on the pitch to show any sort of leadership or decision making to decide to go for to decide to run the ball. That was the the bigger problem for me was that no one was. Stepping up and making a decision. No one was leading out there yeah. in terms of no one, no one was definitive about what the best option was to do. They'll be all right when Sinfield comes back. <laughs> okay, um, Paul Ludo. Long injury, though, isn't it? It's been a heck of a long injury, yeah, yeah absolutely. Paul Ludo Lewis says, not the greatest game to start the season, but Super League is back, so who cares? I could have watched and nil, at 0-0 nil, nil and still been buzzing. Two average sides, both will be in the eights, and neither will make the grand final. Okay, stats then. Mm. Um, Saints only really won on two of the key stats. Um, average game, which they won by 1.3 metres per carry, and kicking success. Um, they edged total metres, but only by 18, so that's neither here nor there. Uh, other than that, numbers would say Leeds should have edged this game rather than the other way around. Um, a 2.5% lower team tackle success rate, 7 more errors and 4 more penalties conceded by St Helens, more offloads, busts and an extra break from Leeds, so more negative plays from Saints and more positive plays from Leeds really when you look at that all wrapped up. Um, in all it added up to 35 more carries and 71 fewer tackles made by Leeds but they couldn't capitalise on that extra possession and energy um, to win it. It's all the things everyone said about toothless attack, solid goal line defence. 
that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Individually, Alex Wormsley uh, made 154 metres. My view is Alex Wormsley and James Rowe.